Section 27 of the South African Constitution states that everyone has the right to have access to healthcare services. However, sy systemic and uh, structural challenges see a barrier to access for a number of citizens when it comes to healthcare. Bahai Sudumilan, good evening. My name is Tabo Malukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we shine the spotlight on the Unjani Clinics NPC in an effort to understand the work that they do you know, in attempts to bridge the gap in access to healthcare, as well as empower black women in the healthcare industry. Now, joining us in studio to tell us more about the Unjani Clinics NPC is the organization CEO, Linda Toussaint. Uh, she's joining us in studio this evening. Linda, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a pleasure being here. Much appreciated. I mean, I want us to start by getting a better understanding mm -hmm. of uh, what exactly is Unjani clinics and how Bayer is involved, you know, in this whole process. Yeah. Um, so Unjani clinics was established back in 2014, um, conceptualized in 2010, um, and really the idea of the need that we have in healthcare um, and the fact that we have such a shortage of doctors, um, the idea of task shifting our very experienced nurses, task shifting to them and giving them an opportunity to take care of our communities. And so the idea is that we empower nurses, as you mentioned, professional nurses to own or to operate and then ultimately own their own clinic within our community. So identifying the areas of need, empowering the nurse and what the, the non-profit company does, which is Anjani Clinics NPC, is we raise the funding to put the infrastructure down. We provide the, the systems and the, nece and the necessary requirements for the nurse to be able to operate a business. So we talk about talk changing a nurse from a nurse to a nursepreneur. So give her the business skills to run a clinic. Um, and the funding comes from um, wonderful organizations such as Bayer, who provide the necessary, and it's triple BE funding that allows mm. us to be able to empower our nurses in those, in those clinics and pay for the equipment and the infrastructure and train them. Um, in those clinics. I mean, obviously there is a need, you know, uh, when you look at uh, the different uh, communities, um, you would see that um, uh, a lot of townships are overpopulated and, and then you'd see, you know, in just uh, the healthcare centers that we have, uh, there's less stuff there and then you get to, uh, you know, wait in line for quite some time there. Yeah. So the importance of such an initiative, you know, in terms of changing uh, the whole uh, landscape uh, of, how do I put it, in terms of changing just how we view healthcare services. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, you know, a lot of people uh, have got a term for healthcare, uh, particularly public. Mm -hmm. They'd say that, look, I mean, they are not really doing it for us. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> excuse, excuse me, the, the whole reason behind Ranjani was because we serve the same patient, it's a public patient. And so, in order for us to be able to capacity build um, by holding hands with government in a way and ensure that we can give the, um, the, un the employed uninsured patient who has some access to funding to be able to pay for a service, an affordable service at an Anjani clinic, what you're finding there is you draw those patients away from the government facilities which then frees them up to deal with those that cannot pay. You shorten those queues and you divide the workload. Um, you give the public patient a choice. Now they can go to the government facility for free or they can come to an Anjani clinic at a, at a relatively affordable price. Um, but at the same time, you are health system strengthening by putting additional infrastructure on the ground in communities. So they work together. Um, and in terms of you know, national health insurance, we're looking to play a role as a service provider which is why we are expanding and growing the Unjani network to serve, to, sorry, to serve more communities um, because that's crucially what we're trying to do is, as you said, Section 27, it's a right. Um, people need to have access uh, to, to, the, to the healthcare that they need. Mm. Um, let's talk about the process that is involved, mm. you know, when applying for assistance and what criteria mm. uh, do you look for, you know, when you decide on a good uh, candidate to receive the assistance to offer these services? Mm. So it's a very long process that the nurses go through. The application is made on our website. Um, the nurses need to meet certain selection criteria. Uh, so they must be primary healthcare trained. 
uh, they must um, have five to ten years worth of primary healthcare experience because they would be operating on their own. They are NEMART certified, which means they can do nurse-initiated management of antiretroviral therapy. They have a dispensing course that they've done. Um, and they have the necessary experience to be able to operate a clinic on their own. So while we have doctor oversight and we have access to doctors through our virtual platforms, the nurse operates her clinic as a nurse-led clinic um, and she employs the staff into that clinic as well. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a process she goes through. Once she's made that application and meets that criteria, we then ask her to identify the area in which she wants to open a clinic. And the reason we do that is because you want um, the nurse to have come from a community um, and the community accepts her. And it's more of a rural thing when it's rural um, based clinics. Yeah. Uh, they must be from their community and so they are trusted members of their community and, and people support um, their clinic then. Um, what is the assistance like in terms of day to day, um, you know, running of the clinic? Uh, in terms of skills development, they're just saying that, you know, they've attended the different courses. Obviously, a certain, um, you know, um, in terms of uh, experience and yeah. stuff, um, uh, how are you assisting them in terms of the day-to-day -day running of yeah. the clinics? <coughs> Sorry again. So the whole idea behind this is we take experienced nurses, so we don't need to teach them to be clinicians. They have an area in which they can then operate their clinical skills. Um, we provide uh, standard operating procedures, so very much on social franchising principles where the non-profit company is the franchisor, the nurses are the franchisees. We're non-commercial commercial in nature and they are commercial because they charge for their services. But this, the, the support that we give is the standard operating procedures of running an angina clinic. They go through the training of that. What do you need to do in each and every step in order for you to um, make success of your business? And we provide them with the necessary systems, the electronic patient management systems and the training to be able to run their clinics as efficiently as possible. I want this to park it there, uh, Linda. We will continue uh, the conversation after the ad break. Do stay with us. Uh, we will bring in Sister Susanna Mdalosa to the conversation just to talk to us as uh, one of the beneficiaries of the Bay of Funding. Do stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Before the ad break, we started the conversation on Unjani Clinics NPC and what is it that they do with the organization CEO Linda Tosant, who is still joining us in studio this evening. Now to help us unpack the conversation further, we are now joined by Sister Susan Mdalose, who is a nurse and beneficiary of the Bay of Funding. Uh, Sister Susan, thanks very much for joining us. I know you prefer us to call you Sister Tiny, so I'll, I'll stick to that. Sister Tiny, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Much appreciated. You know, I mean, as a beneficiary of mm. uh, this, um, you know, wonderful initiative, maybe just take us through, you know, how this has helped you and also the impact that uh, you are making in the community that you're based in. Okay. Firstly, I will um, start by saying um, I joined Unjani during COVID. I saw nurses working and toiling away and dying, mm. saving the community and saving the nation. And I decided I want to be there in the midst of the action. We must die together. We must take care of our communities and I want to be in the community taking care of people and making a difference and changing lives. And that's what motivated me to want to open an Unjani clinic. I went through the processes Linda has uh, alluded to that. I applied and um, my, the clinic that I'm running is at uh, Luferi in Soweto. The area doesn't have a clinic. It's a huge area which is a combination of um, we call it bond houses. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's the best way to call mm -hmm. them. Um, you have uh, RDP houses and then you have flats. So it's a very huge population. There's no clinic there. So I saw a need to open a clinic and serve the community because when we're doing the community survey, some of the comments we got is that um, uh, senior citizens walk a distance to get to the local clinic. And I like the Unjani model. You know, we're bridging between a private doctor, someone who has a medical aid, and also the government, local government clinic, we are somewhere in the middle. Someone who cannot afford to pay a medical aid,
but don't want to stand in the long queues in the local government clinic and listen to some of the shortages that they're having may choose to come to Unjani if they can afford the minimal fee. Because remember, we, we, we are saying we are offering quality primary health care services at affordable prices. So that is uh, what we are really emphasizing because we are saving local communities. So I think that really caught me. I like to serve, I like to be at the center of saving the community, but also I am business minded. I like to look at it as a business. So I was attracted to the model because it's a combination of the two. I get to fulfill what I am passionate about and I get to change lives in the communities and I get to grow as a businesswoman as mm -hmm. well. So it's a very good model because um, once you join, there is a, a lot of mentoring and coaching that goes on and there are some trainings that we get as well. And I think for someone who hasn't been um, into business before, let's say typical nurse, it's very valuable to get um, business training and coaching because that's not what you do when you work at the clinic. I, uh, before we, we, we continue with uh, the mentorships and other things, um, how is the community receiving this? Okay. You know, obviously, um, as you said, that people were walking distances. I mm. mean, a big community such as that without any uh, clinic yeah. of some sort, somewhere, somehow, you know, it's, 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 it's very difficult to travel somewhere else. But let's talk about the importance of just that community setup and also how they have received mm -hmm. this i know that it's 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 still new but uh, how are they receiving it okay we're having a very good reception in the community and i'm glad about it i matched with the with the with the, with the community we my clinic hires local um people i think 100 percent of the people who work at the clinic belong to the same community so the community identifies with our clinic. They are very protective. I must say in the two and a half years, we've never had a break in. We've never had, I know we get exposed to a lot of crime yeah. because we're running private practice. There's a lot of cash that comes in. We use cash cards and medical aids. So, but we've never been exposed to that. And we are based uh, out at the back of a school. So we also have a very good relationship with the school. The schools around there's a primary school and a high school so our relationship is very good i must say the reception has been positive if i see a gogo -go coming to do a consultation and um as nurses we focus on you know we, we spend time with our patients generally we don't do what's the problem and quickly and chase them away so we really spend our time to listen to them to get to know them to create that rapport even before we provide the service so we, we, we form, I formed this bonds with a lot of families because I would have Gogo, sometimes I don't know um, that I'm seeing the whole family until Gogo comes and tells me. Mm -hmm. You have seen my husband, he came, he had flu, and you have seen my uh, son-in-law, you have seen my grandchild. So they bring the whole family comes because of the, 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 the kind of service that we are providing. And I think it's an encouragement to me being in the community that they see me as one of their own and they feel that the care we provide is good. And they actually mm. pull others to come and utilize the service. So it's very encouraging to us to say, I didn't make a mistake by coming here. I think it was a good choice. And they're appreciative of the fact that they don't have to walk a distance. It's right there, close to them. And I think that's what the Unjani model is all about. You go to where the community is, you set up the clinic there, service the local community so they don't have to walk a long distance. We get a lot of emergencies that we deal with. And I must say it's life-saving for them to be able to access the clinic quickly. And uh, even before we are in a position to call an ambulance if it's a condition that requires referral to a hospital, but we are able to stabilize the patient and then keep them there calm and controlled and we take care of them while we're waiting for the ambulance. So it's very valuable to us to see us uh, changing lives, but I think it's very, it's more valuable to the community mm. to have, mm. to have us there, I'm sorry. Linda, um, I, I want to come to you, but uh, we're going to take a quick short break, uh, you know, just to look at, you've used the word, uh, you know, nurse, mm. uh, mm. you know, I want us to unpack it a bit, the importance of 
uh, you know, still maintaining that professionalism, mm -hmm. you know, being uh, a person who will be able to give the people the, the, the healthcare services that they need, but at the end having that business mind. Yes. I want us to touch on that when we come back and the issues of mentorships and stuff. Let's park it there, we're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We're still in conversation with Unjani Clinics and PC and how they are empowering communities through their funding program and what the next, you know, the next step is. Uh, we are still with uh, Linda Tosan, who is the CEO, and uh, that's uh, Sister Tiny Mdalose. Uh, I'm not sure if I should say AKA, but... <laughs> you can do that if you want to. <laughs> but Linda, I want to bring it to you, uh, this one. I mean, you spoke about Nespreneurs, mm -hmm. you know, the importance of still maintaining, you know, your professionalism mm -hmm. when it comes to providing healthcare services and then also maintaining that posture as a businesswoman. How important is that? I think it's critical. I think, you know, the whole idea behind this is building sustainable businesses. So you have to bring the business into the clinic in order for those jobs that have been created to be permanent jobs, for the nurse to have created a clinic business that is sustainable into the future. So if the non-profit company or any of the funding falls flat, she's got a model that she can follow and she can continue to run a sustainable business. It's crucial. Um, I think the whole, the whole idea behind empowerment and entrepreneurship is about sustainable businesses and really growing them um, from the ground roots, uh, the you know, grassroots upwards. Um, and I think that's what the whole model is about here. So now how many clinics do you guys have uh, just in general? Uh, so we have the um, 175 care settings um, we, and including in those is 165 fixed clinics. Um, we've empowered over 140 nurses in their own businesses uh, and some of our nurses own a second clinic as well. So once they have gone through their five year program, the next step in entrepreneurship is the ability to then open a second clinic and then manage a team that uh, works within that clinic. Sister Tani, uh, let me bring it to this conversation. I mean, how important is mentorship, you know, support, mm. skills development? I mean, also you will be hiring people uh, from, you know, to, to assist in providing those services. How important mm. is that? And also, you know, the support structure, mm. the importance of that. I think I will start by support. Support is very key because remember you, I'm, I'm out there in the community by myself mm -hmm. and I'm starting this clinic and I've never run a clinic before. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have the expertise, the knowledge, I'm trained uh, to do what I need to do, but the business side of things can easily fall flat if I don't get the correct coaching and training and actually support, you know, the occasional call, we see your numbers are not growing, what are the kinds of problems you're experiencing because it's a business, we do ma we market, obviously we raise awareness about the services that we are offering, what kind of issues, maybe you, you, you're falling behind with, you know, paying your bill in terms of your medication that you order or your service providers or staff, they get involved in understanding what are the problems. What can we do to help you guide, you give ideas? Maybe you should consider this in terms of your marketing, how, you know, they I think coaching, coaching and mentoring keeps you on track as far as my assessment goes. It keeps me on track to say, I need to focus on the ball. As far as, far, even though I'm offering services, I'm taking care of the community, but my eye must never lose on the ball of the fact that I'm a businesswoman. I have employees that I've hired, I, I have uh, overheads that I need to cover with the budget. So I need to always think about that, always think about how we are also being perceived in terms of the reputation of the business, yeah. how we're carrying ourselves and how we actually, th that is part of the Unjani brand. I need to maintain that as well because it's a franchise. And also they play a role to help us make sure you keep within the brand, this is how we manage the brand. Don't go beyond this, you maintain this because it's important. Otherwise you'll have 20 unjanis that look different from each other. So they help with that through mentoring and also the regular meetings that we have. We even have, um, is it Zoom or um, Teams? 
yeah there's some someone a, a wonderful lady in, in unjan who also does training on financial management on and ongoing how you compile your financial reports of course you'll have an accountant but on a monthly basis how you compile your financial reports looking at the bank statements and um, maybe overspending on this maybe you need to look at the mm -hmm. maybe you shouldn't be buy, you shouldn't be buying clothes at true words with a business card you know <laughs> things like that <laughs> because someone might not really know mm -hmm. so it's very it's for me it's important coaching is important mentoring you, you know it's like you, you you we get coached in the beginning and I'm at that level where I'm being mentored because now I'm two and a half years old. I don't need the coaching, yeah. the, the, my hand being held, but I still get a lot of support. I get, I get calls, I get um, feedback because it's important to also get a constructive criticism on how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not doing it correctly here. I need to relook at mm -hmm. how I'm running this. So it helps, and the trainings that they provide also really does empower us a lot. Linda, before I bring it to this, uh, just in brief, um, you know, how do we then allay the fears? I mean, you know, you spoke about the reputation of the business itself. Mm. Everyone knows, uh, you know, they've got a certain view of how healthcare is mm. uh, in this country, particularly public. Yeah. Um, how do we allay the fears? Because, you know, uh, people are very resistant yeah. to change yeah. or try new things. How do you make sure that, uh, you know, you are actually allaying their fear that, look, this is the product that will be able to assist you? I start by saying to, to prospective patients and clients out there, come to Unja Ni Clinic and experience the treatment, the attitude and the care and have, uh, give us your feedback. And I can assure you, we always have um, these feedback boxes. The feedback that we get is quite positive. Of course, you don't expect the, the positives only. You yeah. also expect um, a bit of criticism so that we can improve on waiting time. Or maybe someone came at the reception and they were not uh, received properly or there was a bit of rudeness. So we need to deal with that, to root that out, to make sure that we improve on our services. So it's, 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 it's quite key, actually. Linda, let me close it off with you. I mean, uh, where can people find more information, you know, as far as the application process? And also, uh, can they do it online? Uh, is all the information available on so your social media pages? How do they get in touch? Great. Um, so on our website, www.unjaniclinic.co.za, uh, nurses can go and make application on that on the page. And all of our clients can find their closest Unjani clinic on that same um, website. Uh, we have Facebook and social media platforms that uh, all of the nurses have their own Facebook pages. Uh, and so we're, we're the best place to go and look is on the website. But uh, yeah, I encourage everybody to come and experience an Unjani clinic. Let me thank uh, both of you for coming in. I hope that uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have you soon. I'm not sure if you want to have some padding shot uh, in brief. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I have to make sure I'm in <laughs> Yeah, I will say come to Unjani Clinic to experience quality services at affordable prices. We really pride ourselves with quality service and, and our patients can say a lot about that. But we pride ourselves with that because we go an extra mile to make our patients feel welcome, comfortable, taken care of so that they can come back. But it's not about the money, it's firstly about patient care. Mm -hmm. Luffering, right? Luffering, please do come and experience it yourself. Let me thank both of you, much appreciated for coming this evening. Thanks again for the opportunity. And thank you. And continue with the good work. That was uh, the CEO of Unjani Clinics and PC. That's Linda Tosan and Sister Susan Mdalose, AKA I would call her Sister Tiny because she prefers it that way. Uh, you know, just giving us a better understanding of what Unjani Clinics is and how our communities are benefiting from this initiative. That's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email it's Soweto today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call WhatsApp us. The number is 081-531-8857. Maschaba Kobola is up next with the latest primetime news from myself, Tabamulukwane, and the rest of the team. Good night and thank you for watching.